we get asked from time to time why they don't try to land these capsules on the Earth, there are two basic reasons. Uh, first and most important is they can make them a lot lighter if they land in the ocean. It's a softer landing. They'd have to make the structures much stronger and heavier if they were to withstand the shock of landing on, on Earth, on the ground. And weight is one of the most important factors in space flight. <clears throat> Second reason is they've got a lot more room in the ocean. It'll be a considerable uh, number of miles off target and still have a safe landing. There were planes stationed as far as 165 miles away from the main recovery area that could have dropped these pararescue teams, got them secured with the flotation collar, and waited for the carrier to arrive. Mm, and that's back down in the raft again, ready to pick up the second man. And he's on his way. a lot less dangerous, too. It'd be quite a sight for one of these things to come down in the middle of Philadelphia. <laughs> they certainly use a lot of different means of transportation in the course of one of these things. I'll say that's mean. Just... Just to I see. think you're right. Let's see. It was me. Well, if Conrad is that uh, last report, the second astronaut aboard, uh, Commander Alan Bean. If he's not the last to leave the craft, he's going to be the last to leave the raft. <laughs> Their flight lasted 10 days, 4 hours, 36 minutes, and 24 seconds. They've been on the water now almost an hour. It hasn't said much more than all operations normal, which is good to hear. What was the last report on the carrier? About 600 yards away? Something 900, like that. 900? It would be a very short flight. we're hearing um, are not from this helicopter. It's from another one nearby. It has a uh, photographer's board. It's called a photo helicopter. And they should be snaring the basket for transport of their final passenger. And I believe it appear to have it. It doesn't take them long to scramble in. <laughs> Sitting in there like a little canary. <laughs> Knowing him, he's probably singing. <laughs> well, if there was ever a catbird seat, that's it. <laughs> So we have it.
and all the strange and exotic ways of traveling are now out of the way, and it'll just be a short helicopter ride back to the carrier deck. Uh, the men will come out. And then they go inside that... Um, Rescue helicopter one. Aluminum diner. And they spend the remainder of their 21 days in quarantine. So let's let's rejoin NBC News correspondent Peter Hackus and correspondent Charles Murphy, who are aboard the Hornet, and uh, they can describe the arrival and the activities thereafter. And he is talking on another radio circuit with uh, doctors and uh, NASA officials aboard this ship, describing their condition, talking about them medically, and uh, during the few minutes that that takes, the helicopter will make a long, slow, lazy, circular approach to the deck of this carrier. And there you see the four decals, the four symbols on the nose of number 66, indicating that it has participated and brought back to a carrier deck the occupants of three, or rather four, Apollo spacecraft. If you like to play with numbers, these are the, uh, well, of course, you have 66. You have the number of the aircraft carrier, which is CVS number 12. This is Apollo 12. And we could go on from there. The well, all the astronauts are aboard helicopter 66, and all are in good condition. They will be arriving on the flight deck in helicopter 66 in two or three minutes. As Peter Hack has said, the flight surgeon aboard the helicopter, Dr. Clarence Jernigan, needs time to consult with surgeons aboard the carrier about uh, decontamination procedures, about whether they were properly observed. If it is decided that they were properly observed, that no one else was contaminated, why the helicopter will come in and land on spot five, just short of elevator number two. And the astronauts will go below and enter quarantine. Now, if it is decided with, that uh, someone else may have been exposed to the possibility of contamination, why uh, they, those persons uh, would have to enter the backup quarantine trailer. We don't believe, of course, that that has happened. We've just been told that the astronauts are in outstanding condition. That word coming from Helicopter 66 from Dr. Jernigan. The ship itself is making a turn again. It is turning directly into the wind now. This is necessary. Otherwise, the helicopter with a, a rotor is coming in. Recovery on spot five, photo one on spot nine. Photo one to relaunch. The air officer of this helicopter, Commander Patch, has just advised the flight deck to land helicopter 66 on spot five. That's the spot from which it took off earlier this morning to make this pickup of the Apollo 12 astronauts. Standing by, is a ground crew, Airedales, these men are called by the Navy, to assist in the bending of the rotor blades back on the helicopter. The blades are normally bent back from the cockpit, but on one of the simulated pickup exercises, the cockpit encountered some trouble bending the blades back. So it has stationed on the flight deck a crew of Airedales to stand by and manually move those blades back if necessary. The blades have to be bent back in order for the helicopter to fit onto the flight elevator. The hangar deck is directly below the flight deck. sailors out on the flight deck here to see helicopter 66 come in and the mission of Apollo 12 end. 
Among them are 30 members of the ship's band. They will play two or three tunes when the helicopter sits down and then go below to play for the ceremony that will follow. Before going out today, the crew of Helicopter 66 had a stencil painted onto the nose of that ship, the fourth emblem of an Apollo capsule. As Peter has mentioned, this helicopter has picked up the Apollo 8, the Apollo 10, the Apollo 11.